Recrudescence of South's Intolerance by W. Allison Sweeney. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Matt Perard. Recrudescence of South's Intolerance by W. Allison Sweeney from The American Negro in World War I. Old feelings of race prejudice and intolerance, appearing mainly in the South, confronted the Negro at the beginning of the war. The splendid attitude of the Negro shamed and overcame this feeling in other sections of the country, and was beginning to have its effect even in the South. It is true that men of the race were not accepted for voluntary enlistment in numbers of consequence in any section, but had the voluntary system continued in vogue, the willingness and desire of the race to serve, coupled with the very necessities of the case, would have altered the condition. No new Negro volunteer units were authorized, but the demand for men would soon have made it imperative. It would have been combated by a certain element in the South, but the friends of the few volunteer units which did exist in that section were firm in their championship and were winning adherence to their view that the number should be increased the selective draft with its firm dictum that all men within certain ages should be called and the fit ones chosen put an end to all contention the act was not passed without bitter opposition which developed in its greatest intensity among the southern senators and representatives feelings that were inspired entirely by opposition to the negro it would have been a bad thing for the country and would have prolonged the war and possibly might have lost it if the selective draft had been delayed but it would have been interesting to see how far the country especially the south would have progressed in the matter of raising a volunteer army without accepting negroes undoubtedly they soon would have been glad to recruit them even in the south unfortunately for the negro the draft was not able to prevent their being kept out of the navy it is a very desirable branch of the service vitiated and clouded however with many disgusting and aristocratic traditions when the navy was young and the service more arduous when its vessels were merely armed merchantmen many of them simply tubs and death traps and not the floating castles of today the services of negroes were not disdained but times and national ideals had changed and the shame of it not to the credit of a commonwealth for whose birth a negro had shed the first blood and a washington had faced the rigors of a valley forge a lincoln the bullet of an assassin the annual report of the chief of the bureau of navigation rendered to the Secretary of the Navy and covering the fiscal year ending June 30, 1918, showed that in the United States Navy, the United States Naval Reserve Force, and the National Naval Volunteers, there was a total of 435,398 men. Of that great number, only 5,328 were Negroes, a trifle over 1%. Between June and November 1918, the Navy was recruited to a total force somewhat in excess of 500,000 men. Carrying out the same percentage, it is apparent that the aggregate number of Negroes serving in the Navy at the close of the war could not have been much in excess of 6,000. Some extra enlistments of Negroes were contemplated, as the Navy had in process of establishment just prior to the armistice a new service for negro recruits it was to be somewhat similar to the pioneer units of the army partaking in some degree of the character of marines just as the pioneers partake of the character of infantry but in general respects resembling more the engineer and stevedore units about six hundred men had been selected for this service when the project was abandoned on account of the ending of the war. With the exception of a very limited number who had been permitted to attain the rank of petty officer, Negroes in the Navy were confined to menial occupations. 
they were attached to the firing forces as coal passers while others served as cooks assistants mess attendants and in similar duties quite a number were full rated cooks a few were water tenders electricians and gunners mates each of which occupations entitled them to the aforesaid rank of petty officer among the petty officers some had by sheer merit attained the rank of chief petty officer which is about equal to the rank of sergeant in the army the idea of separate ships for the negro might to some degree ameliorate the sting incident to race prohibition in that arm of government service the query is advanced that if we can have black colonels majors captains and lieutenants in the army why cannot we have black commanders lieutenants ensigns and such in the navy negroes have often and in diverse ways displayed their intelligence and efficiency in the navy take for instance the case of john jordan a negro of virginia who was chief gunner's mate on admiral dewey's flagship the olympia during the spanish-american war and was the man who fired the first shot at the enemy at manila bay a negro chief electrician salisbury brooks was the originator of inventions which were adopted without reservation by the navy designers and changed the construction of modern battleships one of the principal instructors on the uss essex the government training ship at norfolk is matthew anderson a negro he has trained thousands of men many of them now officers in the art and duties of seamanship scores of negroes men of the type of these in the navy would furnish the nucleus for officers and crews of separate negro ships in a recent issue of our navy a magazine devoted entirely to naval affairs especially as regards the enlisted man a writer reflects the opinion of these men in the following article Quote, whether you like the black man or not whether you believe in a square deal for him or not you can't point an accusing finger at his patriotism his americanism or his fighting ability it is fair to neither the white man nor the black man to have the black man compete with the white man in the navy true we have black petty officers here and there in the navy and in some cases black chief petty officers it stands to reason that they must have been mighty good men to advance they surely must know their business every inch of it to advance to these ratings yet they are not wanted in these ratings because they involve the black man having charge of white men under him outside of the messman branch you will find comparatively few negroes in the navy today there should be black ships assigned to be man by american negroes these are days of democracy equality and freedom continues the writer if a man is good enough to go over the top and die for these principles he is good enough to promote in the navy why not try it put the black men on their own ships promote them rate them just the same as the white men but above all keep them on their own ships it is fair to them and fair to the white men the Brazilian and Argentine navies have black ships. Unquote. Recruiting officers of the navy have recently opened the doors to discharged Negro soldiers and some civilians. If physically fit, they are permitted to enlist as machinists and electricians. The navy has opened a school for machinists at Charleston, South Carolina, and a school for electricians at Hampton Roads, Virginia men for the machinist school are enlisted as firemen third class while in training they are paid thirty dollars a month they also receive their clothing allotment their food dry comfortable quarters in which to live and all textbooks and practical working tools in return for this chance to become proficient in a very necessary trade all that is required of those enlisting is a knowledge of common fractions ambition to learn the trade energy and a strict attention to the instruction given them subjects taught in the course are arithmetic notebook sketching practical engineering 
theoretical engineering, clipping and filing, drilling, pipe fitting, repair work, rebabbiting, brazing, tinsmithing, lathes, shapers, milling machines, and grinders. It will be seen that they get a vast amount of mechanical knowledge and practically two trades, machinists and engineering. In the electrical school, the course is equally thorough. The men get a high grade of instruction, regardless of cost of material and tools. The best textbooks that can be had are available for their use. This liberality in order to get machinists and electricians in the Navy argues that some change of attitude towards the Negro is contemplated. It may evolve into the establishment of black ships. The Negro sailor has been pleading for years that his color has been a bar to him. With a ship of his own would come his chance. He would strive, do all within his power to make it a success, and would succeed. End of Recrudescence of South's Intolerance by W. Allison Sweeney